This video is going to introduce some common CSS terminology and, and be an overview introduction as to what CSS is and how it applies with HTML. So to this point in a lot of the videos that you may have watched from uh, my YouTube channel here, we talk about in terms of just, you know, we've really been focused here on the hypertext markup language. We have mainly done any form of editing, layout, and design using HTML properties. So, you know, we change things like color, your font, etc., without going too in depth into other sorts of options. However, what you may have begun to notice is we really didn't have a lot of control over the layout of the page. This leads to, you know, kind of back in the olden days, I guess I'll say, we used to use things like tables to try to get structure in our web pages. We don't do that anymore. This is where CSS comes into play, which again stands for cascading style sheets. And really the big thing I want to emphasize to anybody watching this video here is both the style element where, yeah, this is way more, you want to kind of have a design eye for that. But also as well, there's another element is cascading. Now, what do we mean by cascading for the style sheets? So we know that these style sheets link back into the HTML document and they alter the design for us here. But what about cascading? Well, for cascading here, let's kind of go down here a second and look at a graphic and think about this. So I have a cascading style sheet that I have a bunch of declarations in, background color, font, uh, for headings, for paragraphs, etc. All cascading style sheets have the .css extension. However, let's go ahead and think about this in terms of a website. So I not only have my CSS in a folder here, but all of these little boxes here are HTML documents. So let's say I've got six HTML pages. Now on each of these pages, I have a header that I want to have. So let's say I have an H1 that I want to have, for whatever reason, it needs to be blue. Now, I'm working for a client, though, and the client comes along and says, hey, uh, that's great and all, but I actually want to change it from blue. I want you to change it to, I don't know, yellow. Well, OK, we have a couple of options here. We actually already know how to do this. We can just highlight the headers in all six of the HTML documents and change the color to yellow. Honestly, six pages for a website is pretty small, so it may seem manageable. Eh, it's a little aggravating, but it's something that we can do. Now imagine though, if you had a website that had HTML documents times 100, so you have 600 HTML pages. Now the idea of going through and changing each of these header tags may not seem so great. What if you had one location that you had to go to to change that color from blue to yellow, and then it would trickle or cascade into every subsequent page it's linked to? And that is where the .css file comes into play because we link it into each HTML document. The big thing to take away from this is that we're actually setting it up to change that declaration in one location. And then it kind of has a trickle down effect where I changed it here in the CSS document. So because 
I have a header change here, it's going to go and change onto each subsequent file here. So that's the overall concept of a cascading style sheet. Now truly though, how powerful are these things? Let me go ahead here. I'm going to make a new page here for us and let me go ahead and grab, do a quick fill for you. But I'd like to step outside the little lecture area here. And one place I always point to is what is called CSS Zen Garden. Honestly, uh, hasn't been updated too much in recent years. However, this was one of kind of the standing, like, what can I do with CSS? These were designers, our designers, that pulled out all of the stops. Now, before I go ahead and show you any of the items, I first want to show you here the HTML document. So this is it. And this may look really familiar if you have been uh, working along with, with my YouTube or anything. The, this is the base, the baseline HTML document. We've talked about this in Dreamweaver. You can see some header tags. You can see the paragraph breaks. You can also see your unordered lists here. You can also see numerous links that were created. And now the question is as well, okay, how powerful is CSS? What can it do? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the designs here of what people can do. So we'll go ahead and go with mid-century modern here. So here we have that same, and I'll go back to 100%. We have that same exact HTML document and all that was edited was the CSS of the document. That's it. Nothing else was changed. So here you can see one layout. So let's go ahead and look at another one. Uh, why don't we look at Fountain Kiss here? This is something that if you really get into web design and CSS. Honestly, I strongly encourage anybody take a swing at creating a website on par with like the CSS Zen Garden. I am not sure at this point if they are still accepting submissions, but it is something to consider. So here we have a whole new layout here. Um, as far as the kiss is concerned, but you can see this is the same exact document here. Same exact text, same exact uh, elements, just a completely different design using CSS. So we can even go forward here. So a robot named Jimmy. So here they have some animation going on through CSS. But you can see once again how much CSS or cascading style sheets can alter how a web page looks. It also helps us keep consistency across web pages as well. So I really wanted to emphasize this to students so that you could see the power of CSS. HTML is great structurally. So if we come back over here and discuss that a little further, again, you really want to be thinking about HTML more from a structural standpoint. Like I tell folks, think of HTML, it's the skeleton, it's the backbone that's holding everything up as far as a website is concerned. Yes, you can do some things with it as far as fonts, etc., background color. However, it's so localized to the specific page that it can make things get a little bit hectic to control as your websites get larger. To emphasize, I understand we're working with websites that only have three to five HTML documents. Just trust me and think on a bigger scale. Think on scales of like Amazon or Facebook. And not only are they just using HTML and CSS, they are using numerous other web languages but think on that scale of the number of generated web pages. It's 
pretty much an impossible feat to sit there and say, I'm going to go back and edit every header from blue to purple on all of the HTML pages. It's not really how we design. The CSS on the other, other side, think of it in terms of, you know, looks. So, you know, we could almost say like hair color, clothing style, eye color, you know, and so on and so forth, as far as if you're thinking in terms of the human body. That's what CSS is controlling for us. Now, one more thing that I want to talk about here and kind of hint to before we would dive into somewhere like Dreamweaver here, which we'll do in a video, in a future video here. There are actually numerous ways that we can work with CSS. If we go back to the HTML here, HTML, you really only had one choice. We'd make a .html document. That's it. All HTML was stored inside of this document here. CSS is a little bit different as far as the locations of where the phrase we often say is make CSS declarations. Now, number one is an inline CSS declaration. This is about as close to HTML as you can get. This is stored or declared in an HTML tag, kind of what we call nested. Again, just put this in the back of your mind. Don't worry too much about actually finding this in code. Again, we're looking more from a WYSIWYG standpoint. Another location, so if we call this actually number one, and let's call this number two, is called the header or in document. This is where uh, CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets, we actually we declare it at the start. of the document. Now, this is a little bit better than inline just from the standpoint and more global because you're putting it in the upper portion of the code. And so it's kind of trickling down through that document, but the drawback or the negative is you're still tied down to one HTML document. That's kind of the big drawback. So it's a little bit better than inline that's contained directly in an HTML tag. Still, if I wanted, again, think in terms of those multiple HTML documents. If I wanted to have one location to change, I'm not quite there yet with the in document. Which brings me to the third spot and probably the most commonly used. And that is an external CSS document. This is the biggie that we love to use. Really, because you have the CSS declarations, you don't write them any differently, you don't declare them differently, but we can link to multiple web pages. This is probably the biggest deal. Could you use now, one often, question I often get just in general, both in terms of like teaching from a WYSIWYG standpoint and from a programming standpoint is, well, can I use all three? Technically, yes, you can. And actually there is a hierarchy where inline actually overwrites in document which actually overwrites external CSS. If you, for those of you who are just looking from a WYSIWYG standpoint, if you can just kind of trust me on that, 
I haven't had to specifically override a CSS document using something like inline in ages. Um, normally, with some other terminology that we have, such as uh, classes and IDs, I get enough done in the external CSS doc that I actually rarely, if ever, do in document or in line anymore. Everything is external. And also, too, you can link to multiple CSS documents if you choose. I often use the example of, you know, if, you know, maybe you have a set of CSS for uh, clearance sales versus just the everyday website layout. So maybe the clearance sales has some color changes, some new images uh, positioned at certain locations. On the other hand, you're just general day to day. You know, it's a totally different CSS document. You can link to either one or both of them. Um, maybe you're keeping certain layout elements from the original or main CSS doc and you have images that look like stickers, uh, changes in colors for headers that are applied in another CSS document. So I could actually have, if I come over here and just use this as a reference, I could have two, we'll just call them one and two CSS documents, both cascading into a single HTML document if I wanted to. That's kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but it's something that I want you to be aware of, kind of just tuck it away and keep it in the back of your mind. So that's a big uh, kind of starting point here as far as HTML is concerned. Really the last thing I'd like to just point out here for this layout here is getting your website set up to work with CSS. So the things that you're going to need in Dreamweaver to get started, again, we're focusing mainly on the WYSIWYG side of things. Folks who have been submitting definition have been doing great as far as your website functionality. Again, that site definition is going to be core you are still going to need some sort of HTML document. And then finally, uh, you're going to want to make a CSS file, and we'll see how to do that in another video. The only other thing you might have is, you know, assets, images, videos, audio, etc., that might be contained in the HTML file. When you are working with CSS, there's mainly two priorities that we use it for. Again, styling of the page, colors, um, text, image locations, but then we also use it for structuring of the page where that's where you see like in CSS Zen Garden, how text was moved around, how things were laid out on the right and left hand side of the screen. That was all through the cascading style sheets. This does get a little bit more advanced. You have things like libraries, you also have frameworks, but for right now, I ask folks, you know, since this is kind of, these are intro videos, keep these in mind, know that they can go beyond that though. All right, so we're going to call it there. In the next video uh, that if you want to watch in the series, I'm going to take you through as far as creating and applying some of the basic CSS styling inside of Adobe Dreamweaver.